Hey gang, uh, this this is old Pacific War. I uh, I have been focused on trying to get through uh, the rules of that game. And you may think, wow, Kevin, you haven't shaved for four days. It's that hard? No, it's not that hard actually. It's just that in between doing everything else, uh, I forgot to shave. I got uh, kind of excited about this. So hey, welcome to the big boy. And uh, I thought what I might do is give us a little, uh, give everybody a little update on where we're at, what's going on, and what I'm playing, what I'm not playing. Uh, it's been an unusual two or three weeks or a month for me. So anyway, we'll put all that aside and let's talk about Pacific War first. So I've been, uh, I got on this little uh, program, it's kind of like the 12-step program for addiction, but on uh, war gaming for Pacific War. As I started going through the rules and looking at how wordy they were, and they're very well laid out and very well organized, and they're indexed and all that sort of fun stuff. And I bought, uh, I didn't buy, I, I downloaded a uh, a copy here that's all uh, in a larger font and laid out a little bit differently and spread out, and so it's much easier to read and don't have to mark up my rule book or, or use a scan of the rule book or anything like that. And as I'm going through it all, I, I realized that. Fundamentally, every section of the rules, the naval combat, air combat, search, things like that, are all very well laid out and very, very simple. What the challenge is, is that every description is incredibly wordy, almost as though they're worded for the OCD at one end, or freaking dumbasses at the other end. You know, for instance, you know, naval combat is only between naval units. So, naval combat, between naval units, we know there's no subs in that, because we know that submarine is not a naval unit, and we know ground units can't be involved, and we know that air units can't be involved. Uh, and that's probably a bad example, but there's a lot of little uh, nuances. Here we go. So if I can find you one that... Uh, I thought this was cute too. When opposing task forces occupy the same hex, and they are not separated from one another by land, uh, yada yada yada, naval combat, blah blah blah. So I looked at all these rules, all these different little nuances and things like that, and uh, basically uh, the surprise segment is a couple of paragraphs, and what it boils down to is either you're detected, or sorry, either both of you are not detected, both of you are detected, or one of you is detected. And if neither of you are detected, then uh, there ain't no combat. Didn't need a whole big explanation about that. Uh, if both of you are detected, go to combat. Cool, got it. Uh, if you're both, uh, if you both fail to detect and you're in coastal waters, then you go to combat. If one of you is detected and the other is not, then the person that's not detected gets surprised. And when you get surprised, bad thing happens to the other guys. That's the uh, combat. Uh, naval combat determination phase. Done. Put that to one side. Combat is awesome. Now, combat, the description for combat, including nodes, takes up a full page. Here's a quick rundown on how naval combat works from what I understand. And the reason why I'm doing this video, actually, is so that not only as I'm cut and pasting uh, this, uh, this set of rules and, and trying to distill it down, so part of my wordy explanation here is that in this 12-step program I'm putting myself through here is that I'm trying to get the rules down from 54 plus pages down to a manageable summary and I'm using uh, I scraped the PDF document and I'm, I'm going to compress that into a Word document and then uh, it's probably not I'm probably not going to share it because I am abbreviating very aggressively and you probably won't understand what I'm what I'm saying I may not understand what I'm saying when I come back to the rules so, so naval combat, really simple, right? First round, uh, the guy that has surprise, he gets to shoot. The other guy done. Second round, uh, you as as a uh, you determine range first. You shoot. Second round, uh, both sides decide if they want to withdraw. If they don't, determine range. Uh, you bid for that. Uh, then you go to combat, and if you have surprise, you get to shoot, and the other guy doesn't. Third round. If you don't withdraw, you determine range, both guys get to shoot. 
in the circumstances where there's no surprise, both sides get to shoot. That's naval combat. Now, the actual mechanics of finding out, you know, you get your, once you've got your range, then you know that you're going to use guns or torpedoes or both. And uh, the Americans can use uh, torpedoes only once in a phase, and the Japanese can use them twice in a phase. So that would mean across the three combats, they could only use them one time, I believe, for the Allies and twice for the Japanese. And then you declare who's firing at what, and if you're going to use guns and torpedoes on a ship, you have to use both on the same ship. And when you declare them, you've got to use them, even if, even if the ship sinks. That, my friends, is naval combat. We're done. Thanks for playing. Uh, <coughs> very cool charts and tables as well. So the charts and tables are very, very, very well thought out. So I'll be really intrigued to see how the new version of this game looks, whether it is, I'm sure it's a, an enhancement and a refinement of these rules. Hopefully, it'll be a more concise set of rules and perhaps there'll be some more Chrome, because hey, who can't use some Chrome? So then, so I'm looking at these rules, seeing that they are really pretty straightforward. I'm wondering where the catch is and why people haven't played this as a campaign game. And I think part of it comes into, uh, there's a couple of different phases, and let me get the right terminology for the phase. Uh, hang on one second, it's here somewhere. And there is a very, very big, and uh, here it is, really well done uh, example of play in here as well. So there's a battle cycle, and then prior to the battle cycle, there is a, see, this is where the sequence of play gets all wacky. It's a contact phase, I think that's what it's called. I'm trying to find it. The map, play it, strengthen. Anyway, I think it's called the contact phase. And both sides get to move. Sorry, one side is, has the advantage and they're moving. And then you're keeping track of the number of movement points they've used or the, the movement as they're accumulating movement points. It's not movement points for naval units, it's um, you're just moving along a track and the track has triggers on it. And then it also triggers time as well. And I think what is causing, what causes a lot of uh, slowness to the gameplay is the fact that every hex I move, the the enemy can search and attempt to detect you. And when they detect you, then things can happen. And that can also trigger uh, the end of your movement for that particular unit or for the phase or whatever the case might be. I forget now. And so I think this hex move hex movement search, hex movement search, could be could be one of the things that really uh, drives uh, an extension of time into into the game and makes it makes it you know actually take longer than the actual war took to play or something like that. So while it's not on the scale of the campaign for North Africa, I think it is certainly uh, a large effort to play. I'm I'm going to be doing a in, engagement scenario, I think, solo, or maybe I'm doing a battle scenario, I think I'm doing something, I'm doing an engagement scenario solo, just to kind of work out the, the mechanics, and there'll literally be a two or three hex distance to, uh, to, in, in, to take Wake Island, where you do the Wake Island scenario, and then I think my friend and I, we're going to do Coral Sea engagements, so maybe that's what it is, I'm doing a battle, and then we're, we're, we're going to do the Coral Sea engagement. Uh, with the view there, I, I'd like to try the campaign if we can. I can put it up on the magnet wall and we can just leave it. That'd be cool. So, Pacific War, interesting game. Really curious to actually move the units around. And I think I'm, I'm probably ready to do that. I'm not going to worry too much about this. After the naval combat rules, there's bombardment, ground combat, retreat procedure. There'll be no retreating on Wake Island because it's a tiny speck in the ocean. Troop quality checks. So I don't know if we'll even get to ground combat on that. We'll see. And that's it for the game, excluding the advanced rules, which is kind of the strategic scenario stuff. And uh, I'm going to summarize, summarize those as well. But right now, I'm actually enjoying learning the game by going through this cut and paste procedure and putting things into game play order. So I'm taking the battle scenario sequence of play and I'm jamming all the search, move, strikes, ground strikes, cap, interceptions, escorts, and putting that all in a funnel underneath the specific, under, underneath, for instance, the advantage air missions phase. Right, good idea. So, let's talk about other stuff. 
I reset Waterloo, the return of the Emperor. Uh, made some mistakes with the artillery there, and I think I've posted a video on that already. If I haven't, that's probably sitting in my pile of posts somewhere. Uh, so I want to get started on that again. The, <coughs> the, ch the, problem, the problem that we had was that it, uh, the, the artillery was a tad too effective the way I was using it. So that really broke what I was doing. So we, I wanted to feel the Battle of Waterloo and see the Battle of Waterloo as this system represents it. So rehashing that I think will be fine. I'm not going to set everything up exactly how it was previously. I'm going to give myself a, uh, a little grace there and just kind of move the units back eight hexes, or eight, eight movement points and start from there. We'll kind of go out from that way. And it's really mainly important where the artillery starts so that you can position the artillery to do your, your strikes on, on your opening targets. So we'll do that. That's probably going to take quite a while because I'm not, I don't have, uh, I'm not going to have as much time as I have had in the past. So uh, the other thing that I'm doing is Road to Victory or Victory Roads or whatever it's called was uh, arrived and it just looks so interesting and gorgeous that I busted out the Budapest intro scenario, played a turn or two of that and went, this is really cool, okay, so I'm going to set this up. So I whacked that bad boy up and I've got the campaign set up and ready to go. And I'm just checking my, they do these large offensive concepts and I'm rechecking how to use the chit, the combat tactical chits uh, effectively. So that's, I'm starting that this weekend, uh, uh, today in fact. So once I get off here, I'm going to go down to the game room and we're going to have a look at kind of what the strategy might be for the Soviets and what strategy could be for the Germans. So that's really all that I'm doing. I've got a few little things going on Vassal, got the Third World War going on Vassal. I've got a huge pile of, of games that have come in recently. Some of them are Wargamer Pay It Forward titles that I've picked up and I'm kind of excited about. There's a, a Battle of Tarawa there and I ordered, uh, I've ordered uh, or subscribe to resubscribe back to Paper Wars. I think I did Counter Attack or whatever it's called. Uh, resubscribe to those guys. Uh, I'll put my name down for the Ares magazine again as well. Now that we've got past the stupidness of the first episode, I'm going to try and see what uh, two and three are like. Uh, I'm not going to get too involved with the War Diaries mainly because there's one writer there who's a bit of a dingbat and uh, I can't. Uh, can't be a supporter of him. That's me being petty. Because uh, he was rude to me and made my hurt my feelings. So, uh, that's really all that's going on. And I don't, I do have a commitment to uh, Vento Nuovo games to uh, play Blocks in Africa. I've had that thing for six months and I haven't played it. So, <clears throat> i got to bust that sucker out and play one of the smaller scenarios there. It's the rules are real much, much crisper than uh, the Blocks in the East system. Fantastic looking game. It's got all of the stuff to put the whole World War II together on a pretty awesome epic scale, bigger than the East Front, West Front thing, and way more accurate as well, based on my reading of the comprehensive rules for the whole thing. I will not be getting to play that entire three-module system for quite some time. I can't see that happening uh, in this year, probably not even next year. It'll be, I've got to really want to get through the chronological World War II stuff before we, we jump into theater-wide uh, explorations of, uh, of, of stuff. So anyway, a bit of a ramble, uh, no ranting, wasn't that nice? All right, gotta go, talk to you guys soon. I'm gonna go uh, roll down the other end of the house and we'll go have a look at whatever I said it was, Victory Roads, Road to Victory, whatever it is later.